Welcome to Catch This, my name is Trudy Ray. According to the Milken Institute, there are currently 319 therapeutic drugs and 241 vaccine candidates in development to treat or prevent SARS-CoV-2 infection. Many of these vaccines are designed to be administered by injection into the muscle. In this video, I would like to talk about routes of vaccination and how administration of a vaccine by a different route may induce different types of antibodies that lead to different outcomes. Intramuscular injection of a vaccine antigen typically induces a systemic immune response, or an immune response that can be detected in the serum, and that involves the action of IgM and IgG antibodies. IgM antibodies appear first and typically bind very strongly to antigens, to the extent that they often cross-react with other nonspecific antigens. IgG antibodies arise later. They're a lot more specific than IgM, and they provide the majority of antibody-based immunity against invading pathogens. Intramuscular immunization usually does not induce very high levels of serum IgA, a type of antibody that is more prevalent in mucosal surfaces and represents a first line of defense against invasion by inhaled and ingested pathogens. The role of IgA in the serum is mostly secondary to IgG. What that means is that IgA helps to eliminate the pathogens that have escaped the mucosal surfaces. Several of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidates currently in clinical trials consist of a replication-deficient adenovirus with an inserted gene that encodes a SARS-CoV-2 antigen. I have discussed one such vaccine candidate developed by Oxford University's Jenner Institute in collaboration with the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca in a previous video linked here. Just to summarize briefly, the vaccine candidate consists of an adenovirus vector with an inserted gene that encodes the full-length SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. The SARS-CoV-2 spike protein has been the antigenic choice for a number of SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidates because it mediates binding of the virus to the ACE2 host cell receptor via its receptor binding domain, and it also mediates fusion of the viral particle with the host cell membrane via its fusion domain. Both of these spike domains are highly immunogenic and are targeted by neutralizing antibodies, which bind viral antigens. But these neutralizing antibodies ultimately also inactivate the virus and prevent infection of new cells. However, preliminary results suggest that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine only protects against SARS-CoV-2 lung infection and pneumonia, but doesn't appear to prevent upper respiratory tract infection and viral shedding. This is a concern for not just the AstraZeneca vaccine, but for all of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines currently in use and the ones in a pipeline as well. We don't know if the vaccines prevent both disease and infection in the vaccinated person or just disease meaning that a vaccinated person could still become infected and shed some virus, even if they don't become sick. This shedding would probably be limited, but still significant enough to have an impact on the community at large. And this is one of the reasons why it is recommended that vaccinated people continue to wear masks for the time being. To mediate fusion of the virus particle to the host cell membrane, the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein undergoes a structural rearrangement from its pre-fusion conformation. Because the pre-fusion form is more immunogenic, vaccines encoding the spike protein often contain a mutation that locks the translated spike protein into this pre-fusion structure. In a recent publication, virologist Michael Diamond and colleagues analyzed the efficacy of an adenovirus-vectored SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidate and compared its protective effects after intramuscular injection to those after administration into the nose. The vaccine, named CHAD SARS-CoV-2S, is similar to AstraZeneca's vaccine, except that its spike gene encodes the pre-fusion stabilized spike protein. To assess the antibody responses induced by intramuscular vaccination with CHAD SARS-CoV-2S, the authors injected mice with 10 billion viral particles of either CHAD SARS-CoV-2S or a control vaccine consisting of the same adenovirus shell, but lacking the spike protein gene insert. They found that one dose of CHAD SARS-CoV-2S induced strong serum IgG responses against both the entire spike protein and just the receptor binding domain, 
but it did not induce IgA responses in the serum or in mucosal lung cells. While antibodies are an important part of the adaptive immune response, cell-mediated immunity is just as important and at the very least results in activation of white blood cells that destroy ingested microbes. Cell-mediated immunity also produces cytotoxic T-cells that directly kill infected target cells. During a first exposure to a pathogen, T helper cells typically sense the presence of antigens on the surface of the invading pathogen and release a variety of signals that ultimately stimulate B cells to secrete antibodies to those antigens and also stimulate cytotoxic T cells to kill infected target cells. When mice were vaccinated with one or two doses of CHAD SARS-CoV-2S into the muscle, the authors found that two vaccine doses induced both T helper and cytotoxic T cell responses against the whole spike protein. So intramuscular injection induced IgG but not IgA responses, and it induced good T cell responses. Collectively, these results suggest that although intramuscular vaccination produces strong systemic adaptive immune responses against SARS-CoV-2, it induces little, if any, mucosal immunity. Next, the authors wanted to determine whether intramuscular immunization with CHAD SARS-CoV-2S protects mice from actual infection. So the authors intentionally infected, this is also known as challenging, immunized mice with SARS-CoV-2. They found that although a single vaccine dose protected the mice from SARS-CoV-2 infection and lung inflammation, the mice still had high levels of viral RNA in the lung after infection, suggesting that intramuscular administration of the vaccine does not lead to complete protection from infection. So they tried a different route of vaccination. They wanted to see if vaccination by the intranasal route or through the nose provides more complete protection. So the authors inoculated mice with a single dose of CHAD SARS-CoV-2S or control vaccine through the nose. When they analyzed serum samples and mucosal lung cells four weeks after vaccination, they found that mice that had received the CHAD SARS-CoV-2S vaccine had high levels of neutralizing or virus inactivating IgG and IgA against both the whole spike protein and the receptor binding domain in both the serum and the lung mucosa and that the number of B cells producing IgA was about five-fold higher than that of B cells producing IgG. Interestingly, the neutralizing antibodies were also able to inactivate SARS-CoV-2 viruses containing a D614G change in the spike protein, one of the many variants circulating in the population, which suggests that CHAD SARS-CoV-2S can effectively protect against other circulating SARS-CoV-2 viruses as well. Intranasal vaccination also induced SARS-CoV-2-specific cytotoxic T cells in the lung mucosa, specifically T cells that produce interferon gamma, an important activator of macrophages and inhibitor of viral replication. The ideal immune response is sterilizing, meaning that it completely protects against a new infection and does not allow the virus to replicate at all. To evaluate the ability of a single intranasal dose of CHAD SARS-CoV-2S to induce the sterilizing immunity, the authors analyzed immunized and infected mice for serum antibodies produced against the viral nucleocapsid protein. Why the nucleocapsid protein? Because the vaccine does not encode this particular protein, any antibodies produced against this protein would be induced by translation of the nucleocapsid gene from the challenge virus and active replication of the virus. So it wouldn't come from the vaccine, but from the infecting virus. All of the mice immunized with a single dose of CHAD SARS-CoV-2S into the nose had very low levels of antibodies against the nucleocapsid protein compared to mice that had received the control vaccine. And this suggests that CHAD SARS-CoV-2S induced strong mucosal immunity that prevented SARS-CoV-2 infection in both the upper and lower respiratory tract. This means that if intranasally immunized mice were to be exposed to SARS-CoV-2, they would not be able to replicate the virus or transmit it to others. That sounds ideal, doesn't it? The study also had some notable limitations. First, it is well known that mice can be poor predictors of human disease outcomes. 
Second, because the mouse ACE2 receptor doesn't easily bind SARS-CoV-2, the mice were engineered to express the human ACE2 receptor, which added a further artificial variable to an already imperfect model system. Third, it is presently unknown how long the observed immune responses would last. But honestly, we don't know that about any of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines, no matter by which route they are given. Nevertheless, studies with influenza virus have shown that mucosal immunization through the nose can elicit a strong local protective IgA-mediated immune response. And I think it is pretty obvious that there are clear advantages to giving a vaccine into the nose, as a spray, for example. Inoculation is simple, it is painless, and it does not require a trained professional. The adequacy of a single dose also has a great advantage. Lastly, a vaccine that prevents viral shedding would be ideal, because in addition to preventing disease in the exposed individual, it would prevent transmission to others. We currently don't have any data about whether the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines currently in use prevent infection or just disease. I believe those studies are currently being done, and we should know more in a few months. Stay tuned because I will probably make a video about that. I believe there are a few intranasal SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidates currently in clinical trials, but none of the vaccines currently in use in the population are delivered by the intranasal route. If the results observed in these mouse experiments can be duplicated in humans, CHAD SARS-CoV-2S would clearly be superior to other SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidates for several reasons. Thank you for listening. My name is Trudy Ray. Please subscribe to my videos so that way you'll get notifications when a new one comes out. I'll see you next time on Catch This.